Oh, hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Eliana in the one minute pool on ICC. Eliana leads with F6. That might have been a mouse slip. We'll see. Um, I'll just play, I don't know, something ambitious in the center. Try to gain space. You know the drill. Uh, F5, huh? Okay. I'll just keep pushing in the middle. Probably bishop d3 is good. Maybe queen e2 to come. Mm, I guess they get into e5 with this next move. But, Check. Wow. Okay, they're playing this creatively. Let's take... Um, Alright, f4. If I can get them to take on d3, then the dark squares are extremely weak. So this move is designed to just go after the rook on... Okay, that's a checkmate. checkmate. Well, they missed that one. <laughs> um, so I'm 26-26 after that game. Let's just go out of here and look at the best list. Because I slipped a couple notches. You see a couple people have surpassed me. Uh, Black Horse 96 was already ahead of me on the one minute pool, but Vanta Kulti, this guy's really good and I don't know too much about him. Haven't seen him often in Bullet. I think I might have played him in five minute or three minute in the past. You can see their ratings are very strong in all categories that they play. So I don't know when this person plays really. It's kind of a mystery, but that's a, that's a nice history right there. 18 and two. So we're playing at our customary time, so it's a little bit uh, late. It's about 12.30 Central U.S. time when I'm playing this session right now. But we're going to shoot for, you know, mid-2600s if we can. Maybe even higher if things go well. We'll see. Let's see who's in the pool playing. I saw Tu Huang was playing. Haven't played him for a few days. Actually, more than a few days, maybe a week or so. And Sauerkraut is playing. Our friend Sauerkraut. Slavko Cicak, the Grandmaster. So I think we'll have some action this session, hopefully against grandmasters. Slugger, I think, is uh, an international master, Priyadarshan Kanapan. Yeah, and I am originally from India, who now studies in the U.S. in St. Louis. Quite a good player, so he would be tough at 23-34. I'm in the pool right now, by the way, just not getting paired. So we'll have a look at this game, just kind of kibitz it for a little bit. 98 is played to go to d6. Uh, well, that's that's a queen right there. Bishop takes c7, or you can take the pawn first and then the queen. So I don't think this game will be lasting too long. Yeah. All right, we got Slogger next. Mm, okay, I might take that pawn, or I was going to take it if he had allowed me to. Uh, now we'll just develop kind of conventionally and see. Um, I guess I'll go e6. Check. Yep, they can do that. I might be ha having to forfeit a pawn now. Yeah, this is not exactly what I wanted, giving up a pawn like this, but you know, we'll, s we'll see if we can make it work. I think I'll try to bring my other rook over to b8 and maybe come here. Let's attack this rook. Maybe I can somehow exploit this pin. Like now knight d5 is nice, and they can't put a rook on c1, so that's um, unpleasant for them, uh, for Priyadarshan. I played him in Blitz before, I know. I think I have one video out there with a Blitz game against him. Um, not so much at other time controls. Okay, so that move... Yeah, I'm just going to play knight d5 because this wins a piece. Or wins the exchange, at least. Also, I win the a2 pawn, which Check. is nice. Um, let's go here. Okay, and he resigned. thought he might go back to c4 or something. And His position is not that bad yet, but it, this should be a decisive advantage for black. So I'm at 2631 after that one. Yeah, it's interesting how he got into trouble after playing. Ooh, multicast. All right. <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting multicast to show up, aka uh, potentially Magnus Carlsen, but he is ready to rumble. He's in the pool, um, maybe fresh off of his trip to Iceland. He's back. <laughs> He's ready to assert himself in his 2850 rating. Um, okay, well, he's playing a little slow at the moment, but we know that doesn't really matter because he plays such strong games. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to defend and not defend. I'm just trying to play solid, I guess. Uh, okay, let's go back with this. I don't, maybe he should have taken my light square bishop. I don't know. I don't want to second guess him too much, but okay, let's just take here. Um, e5. I'm going for him in the center. Let's see if we can... I don't know, do some damage. I guess I'm just losing a pawn now. Probably am. Wow, he doesn't take that. Let's go here. I don't know why he didn't take that 
uh, pawn on f6. Now he will. You know, Magnus is known as like a really awesome endgame player, so um, his prowess... Ooh, my, my rook is like trapped, by the way. Yeah, this is not going to go well. Yeah, king f8 is just winning my rook. Um, so it's it's no wonder that he wants to get to an endgame against me. I'm just going to resign. Because uh, that's his wheelhouse, if this is in fact Magnus Carlsen, which there's some serious speculation that it is. Uh, despite the Chinese flag, don't be fooled by that. <laughs> uh, Magnus is arguably the best endgame player to ever walk the earth, and the best chess player to ever walk the earth. Um, I, I certainly believe that. Um, and you know, you can't really compare players of different generations, but uh, in terms of pure chess strength, I think Magnus is the best of all time, even at his tender age of whatever he is, 23, 24 at the moment. I played this before against Magnus and it didn't go well. So I have to remember not to develop the knight to h6 against him. Um, well, if anything, if I get destroyed by multicast, I know I'm going to get a lot of views on this video. So that's all right, right? So you guys can uh, observe the demolition and maybe the destruction of my very nice 2600 rating. But no, I'm going to take a more positive mindset. I'm going to I'm going to take some rating points off multicast, guys. Isn't that a piece? Didn't you just blunder a piece? Yeah, you did. Okay, now he might playing start playing seriously. This is an incredible opportunity that Usually I don't have <laughs> to go up a piece against the great multicast. Okay, let's do this. Get the knight in on d4. Uh, I can do that, right? Uh, okay. I'm winning more material. I'm not afraid. Check. I am not afraid of you multicast. Unless you start winning pieces like that. Um. Okay, I gotta be careful now. Check. My king is out in the open. I mean, I think my position's practically won, but I have to avoid getting mated. Check. Hmm. Check. Time warning. Uh, this is such a good position, but I might be blowing it. He has Check. to stick with the queen. Check. Check. Don't see a mate, because his, his bishop controls f3 is the whole problem. So. Check. Check. Yeah, I think it's a draw. Check. Check. All right, I'm going to take a draw. I, I should have won that game. I was up a piece. That's a shame. Okay, Tu Huang is the next opponent. We've got the Sharks out today. You know, draw with multicast is nice. Uh, again, I really would have liked that win there because that's a position I for sure should win. I was up a piece clear with no compensation. But hey, that's Bullet, and we're playing someone who... Knows a thing or two about chess, so all things considered, um, you yeah, know, it could be worse. All right, let's go back to e7. Ooh, I didn't realize it was hanging b7. Guess I will just allow him to take my bishop if he wants. I'm worried about that light square bishop. I don't want that to wreck me. Let's go knight d5. I'm hitting the bishop, hitting there. Okay, let's push a5. Tu Huang is someone, um, <laughs> if I were up a piece against, I would feel more comfortable against than, than multicast, a.k.a. Uh, Magnus, potentially. But still, this position is slightly uncomfortable. I guess I'll go bishop f6. Maybe I'll play this knight back to e7. Uh, yeah, sure. He might be able to go c4 against this, but I don't know. I just I need to trade something to simplify. Okay. Well, I'm winning the pawn back now, aren't I? I think I can get away with taking that. Check. I think we're in a fairly even position. I might have a small initiative, like just his pieces look a little less coordinated than mine. I don't think that should amount to anything at all. <clears throat> but there's some traps, like you know, he couldn't Time play. Um, he couldn't play rook c1 in that position just a moment ago. I'm going to try to avoid the queen trade for a moment. Okay. Well, he's he's down on time according uh, compared to me, so... Okay, let's go here. Check. Mm, no trade. Hmm. Check. Let's see if it goes back here, because then I can take that way. No draw given. Check. 
Check. No draw given. All right. Yeah, I can't. I can't pause to offer a draw, nor would I really want to, because this is bullet, and you don't really do stuff like that in bullet. I'm at 26:41 after this game, uh, or prior to this game. Tu Huang and I have played this setup before. Let's see if he tries to hold on to the pawn somehow. Is he? I'll just play this bishop g3 move and take with the h pawn to open the file. All right, let's just take here, and if he takes with this knight, I have queen a4 check, so that's okay. I like this position a lot. Check. He might castle queenside. Let's play rook c1 to prepare for that possibility. If c6, I'm thinking knight e4 and maybe come to c5. Let's keep our king in the center. I don't want to commit it anywhere yet. Uh, g4 maybe? You can play knight d5. I'll just withdraw this knight. I'm not sure it's doing much on e4 anymore. Okay, let's take that. Put the knight on f4, rerouting. King d2, maybe play our rook over. He's going to try to arrange b5. Makes sense. Hmm. Try to get my knight into c5, I suppose. Hmm, okay. My rook is slightly trapped. Yeah, this is this is not not great. My rook is still trapped. Time check. Uh, you can come to b2. Yeah, this is no good. Check. I'm very much in trouble, guys. Rook c2 is an efficient way to end it. Check. Yeah, you can take on e4 and win. Okay, I'm gonna resign that game against Tu Huang. That hurt because I'm down to 26-17. He outplayed me in that end game. Um, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have allowed the pawn to get to c4. All right, Eliana. I wonder if multicast is still playing. The reason why I mentioned uh, multicast's Iceland trip is because he was the guest of honor at the Reykjavik Open, which took place from March 10th through the 18th. And he was supposed to be there, I believe, from March uh, 13th through 16th as kind of the guest of the tournament. And... Uh, uh, he wasn't active on ICC during that time, so <laughs> in my mind, that's evidence that it very well might be him if he uh, was not playing on ICC during that time. It's not like you're going to be uh, spending a lot of time playing Bullet online when you're the guest of honor at a, a huge chess tournament. Um, although maybe I underestimate chess players. That's something chess players might do. So, <laughs> um, All right, I think I'm just kind of down a pawn right now, not playing particularly well this game. I'll just defend the e pawn again. Uh, let's go. Let's go here. Yeah, I'm losing another pawn though. I can blockade with my knight on d6. This is this is okay. It should be should be much better for white, but at least their extra pawn is somewhat negated now. H5. Okay. Um. Let's go f6. Kick that. Hmm. Let's go rook b5. I wonder if they'll go h6. h6 could be a good move. I have knight f5 now. Time warning. That's almost running out of squares for them. My position is very precarious. Okay, I can take that. I can definitely take it. Okay, let's take here. Um, okay, let's go knight f5. If they go rook h7, I can't blunder Check. mate. Check. Okay, they're going for trades. You know, I might be able to do okay in this position. Ah, their their bishop is trapped. Ileana's bishop is trapped. Check. I'm gonna pull this game out somehow. Miraculously. Check. Yeah, they're taking too long to find the best moves. Okay, yeah, somehow I won that game. I'm at 26-26. Up a few points on the session. What's up with Magnus? He's playing. Multicast is playing. Oh, he switched to three minute. So for those of you who may not know about multicast, um, he likes to play a lot of offbeat openings. Here he's actually playing a pretty standard opening. But uh, you know, lots of stuff that he, assuming this is a, a top player in the world, stuff that they would never play over the board in a tournament. Okay. 
So it's almost like they take the first 10 to 15 moves off and then just absolutely crush people. <laughs> it's the impression I get. So that's how Multicast was playing a couple weeks ago. This game, somewhat less so. Lestri is doing a good job. I mean, they're in an even rook ending. They're going to get flagged, but for now, this position is dryish. In fact, if anyone's better here, it's white in view of the B pawn, but still, still likely to be a, a flag and a win for black. All right. I really want to ask Multicast just straight up if he is uh, Magnus. I wonder if he even receives tells. Let's try. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna try, but we got a game against Lestri. All right. Let's go here. Oh, let's take. I'll play h3 and then put the bishop on e3. The reason I played h3 first is so he can't harass me with knight to g4. Is the reason for that. So now I want to go b4, prop up that pawn, and securely defend it. Like, one idea in this setup is to uh, play knight d2 to c4. Now that he's played b5, I can't achieve that anymore. But i got to assume with his backward development, I'm doing well in this position. I'm going to send my knight to b3 and still try to get into a5. I think this is still worthy of uh, play. Let's go g4. This is kind of a radical move. I don't know if it's best. King g2. I'm just kind of biding my time because I'm not completely sure how I want to proceed. I'll bring my rook back to the center. I don't think it was doing anything in that square. Yeah, he's doing a good job of maneuvering his knight into d4. I'm not going to take that, even though it might temporarily win me a pawn. I want to exchange that knight. Um, I should have used the other knight, I think. That's what I should have done. Yeah, I'm not doing a good job of causing problems in this game for black. Let's do this. Okay, let's go here now. Okay, now I think I'm safely going to win the d3 pawn. Maybe they can play bishop f6, but I'll take on d3. My time situation is great. Yeah, Lester just resigned. Back in the pool. Hmm. Tu Huang is playing. Yep. Good action tonight. This is unusual for this time of night. Because it's early morning hours Europe. Where a lot of ICC players are located. Hmm. Interesting endgame with two minor pieces against the Rook, but Tu Huang has more pawns. I'm betting on Tu Huang in this game. Just because they are faster than Eliana, and objectively, I think this position is uh, at least equal for black, probably better. This is one a piece now. Yeah, how does white avoid losing a piece? It's a fork. Knight d7 or knight h7 to defend the bishop are both unavailable. All right, Slogger again. All right, hmm, he's playing unusually <laughs> in the opening. Um, okay, let's go bishop g5. I'm threatening h3 to trap their knight. Okay. Knappen is very good. I Check. think um, Bullet is maybe not his best time control, but he is a great over-the-board player, great chess player in general. Um, I, have, <clears throat> I played him over the board once or twice. I beat him one time. I can't remember if we played any other times. This was a silly move. I thought I could go knight d4, but I can't. So I guess I'll go through d5 and see if I can... Achieve it that way. Check. Okay. So we're getting a trade. Yeah, I'm just going to do this because I, I wanted to attack that knight on c6. Just my original path with knight c3, b5 to d4 was not working. All right. I'm at 26-36 after that game. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to ask Multicast who he is. Just engage him in conversation. Oh, he's playing though. He's playing one minute. Okay. Well, if he's playing one minute, I'm not going to waste my time asking him. I just want to get a game with him. Hmm. That's a weird decision. G takes f6 instead of knight takes f6. Poor sauerkraut. He has a good position, though. 
don't know why I'm saying poor sauerkraut. Psychologically, it's so difficult to play against an opponent you know is strong. Like in that game against Multicast where I was up the piece, um, I think literally against anyone else I could possibly face there in Bullet, aside from maybe Nakamura, I would be totally relaxed and, you know, not expecting anything to go awry. But against him, I just had my guard up. It's almost like I felt like something bad was going to happen, and it did. I dropped my piece back, and fortunately I didn't lose, but, you know, that given the overwhelming advantage I had, it should have been a win. I'll go h5 just to stop any h5 business from him. So that's that's the advantage that the higher rated player has oftentimes. It's like a, just a psychological thing. It's They know the pressure is on you to perform. Um, it does work the other way though from time to time. Like if you're a lower rated player and you're playing a higher rated player, especially like in a tournament, the best way to approach games like that is to be absolutely fearless. Because remember that you have almost nothing to lose most of the time. Uh, the only uh, things you have to lose are your your ego. I mean, rating point wise, if you're a um, if you're a lower rated player, you don't have much to lose against a higher rated player. If uh, I've got a pass B pawn, I guess I'm going to push this. So you got to be fearless and ready to. Um, this is an interesting end game, actually. I'm going to go. I don't know what I'm going to do in this position. I guess I'm going to go here and try to... They have king c4, though, and they can round up that pawn. I do have that move, though. Time warning. This is interesting. This is, like, roughly equal. Hmm. Check. All right, I'm going to go here and try to take out this guy. This is a really interesting endgame. But yeah, be fearless when you play against lower-rated players. Check. Or higher rated players. Just be fearless overall. <laughs> I'm going to offer him a draw. Draw. Alright, that was an interesting game. I wonder if I had a win in that same color bishop end game. I thought my v-pawn would be strong enough, but... Ooh, you know what I might have missed? Maybe f5 would have been good right here. To keep his king out of e4 before I start liberally pushing my b-pawn. Because f5 also makes a way for my king to come to the center. King f7, king e6, king d5. So, uh, yeah, to summar up, summarize my blabbing about playing up or down in rating, um, if you're the higher rated player, you can often exploit that psychological advantage, and you can get away with more stuff because the, the lower rated player is often fearful of uh, what they think you are and what they perceive your skill to be. Um, and if you're the lower rated player, try not to get psyched out by stuff like that. You know, keep your wits about you, stick to your game. Don't play a different opening because you think your opponent is going to know more about it than you. That's silly. That shows that you don't trust yourself. Because in chess, you only have yourself to trust. There's no one else you can rely on, rely on. And if you're not confident in your own abilities against whoever you play, uh, that's going to reflect itself in your, your results. So don't let that be you. Um, I'm up a pawn right now. It's not a stable pawn, but it's, it's a pawn. Um, I'm going to go here because I think he might be planning some knight e4 business. I'll try to trade queens if he lets me. He might not let me. What is that move about? Does that work at all? Okay, well, I'll just trade queens first. And then I'll take here. I think he's going to take on c6, but I don't get it. I think Tuhong miscalculated there. Let's go knight b6. Let's see if they'll trade on f6. Trade on b6. Ooh, okay, they're trying to get me to play rook c8 so they go knight e7. That was clever. Not falling for it too long. I wasn't born yesterday. Uh, okay, let's go here. Kind of wrecking my pawn structure by doing this, but that's all right. I have a passed A pawn now. Ooh, he's tricky. Yeah, I can't take on uh, D5 because he had knight C7. So just tricks, tricks abounding against Tu Huang. Check. Let's give a check and then take here. That's a knight. All right, 26-34 after that game. Back in the pool. Hmm, I wonder if um, Multicast is let back on the best list. Oh, they're still playing. Keep missing them. 28-18. Did Multicast lose? They were higher than that. Ooh, they lost to Sauerkraut. They got flagged, huh? Wow, nicely done, Sauerkraut. 
Huh. Wow, that game we were watching earlier. Yeah, they lost. This game looks like Sauerkraut had that one. Alright, we've got our buddy Demir. I missed my chance to punish Demir's opening in this one. Just win the bishop pair, I suppose. He has a very solid position, though. This is, like, pretty standard-looking stuff, I would say. Let's go b3. Maintain some flexibility in the position. a4, just try to grab space. a5. Um, okay, knight a4. Just work our way in. Knight c5. Yeah, e5 is a good reaction. Okay, I'll take... I'll take here. Take there. I think if I can get my uh, rook... Or my... Bishop on c4, that's kind of nice. Here I'm threatening queen takes g6, so they have to be very careful. Whoops, didn't mean Check. to. Meant to put my rook on c1, in fact. But that's okay. Uh, let's go here. Let's see if they trade with me. They Check. don't, but they drop their knight. And this is nice. This is very nice. Okay, I can take that. That's a free pawn. All right. That's not going to work, Demir. He tried it. <laughs> he tried to catch me playing something fast. All right, we've got multicast again. Okay. We have a QGD. Yeah, multicast likes putting the knight on c6. Again, this is the type of opening stuff I'm talking about. An h5, like completely, completely nonsense move out of nowhere. <laughs> you know? But, you know, I... It's part of some strategy. I'll go a3 and try to stop them from going knight b4. I'm just going to try to play as normally as I can. Um, let's go bishop g5. Use the fact that they can't play uh, h6, let's say. As it stands now, I have a good position. Maybe bishop f3 on the next move? Okay, I guess we're trading queens. Um, let's go f4. They can play c5, though. Oh, no, they can't, because I take... Uh huh. Let's go here. If we can swap bishops and then I can stick my knight on e4, I kind of like that. They have knight c4 whenever they want it, though. Okay, still, though. We're going to go full bear ahead. King f2. They can take the pawn. Um, hmm. Better bring this rook in, just activate. You know, my position is really active. Super duper active, actually. Hmm. Am I winning the A pawn? Guess so. Check. Mm -hmm. Check. Check. Time warp. Let's take here. Check. Hmm. Check. I want to get an E5 if I can. Check. Check. I don't think they're going to do a draw. Check. 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 All right, I took the draw because I don't like my chances with 11 seconds versus 15. I know I have e5, but I'm only up one pawn and this knight is threatening. So he repeated. All right, I'm at 26.50 after that game. Another game where I actually felt okay. I mean, I think I played pretty well. I, I thought I even had an advantage for the, the first part of this game, at least. I mean, if I can't get an advantage when he's playing moves like, uh, not so much knight c6, but definitely h5. <laughs> then that's, that's unfortunate, but no, I did okay. I got an okay position. Go knight h5, attack that bishop. I like playing this line uh, with knight h5. It's kind of fun. He's delaying castling because he wants to see if he can launch an attack against my king. Makes sense. Go here. Um. Okay, let's go rook d8. Maybe knight e7. All right, that's our cue to castle. No mate on h7. Sauerkraut. No mate. Okay, let's go here. Just so I have access to the d5 square. Um, better put this rook on c8 where it's doing something. Something useful, you know. Uh, let's take and then play for a4. Back him off. He can't take on e6. My queen and bishop are defending that square. And I can get knight d5 in next. And maybe queen here. Pin him. Okay. I'm attacking a2 and I'm threatening knight d3 with the fork. This is this is coming up aces. Okay, the knight is coming in though. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's take 
And I guess we're, we're gonna defend. Oof. Uh, okay, time I guess I'm doing this. This time is a huge problem, though. Uh, I'm gonna be tied down after c7. This is not fun. Not fun at all. Let's bring the king over. Check. Okay, let's go here. We'll try to like lock in his Check. king, you know. All right, he's making a break for it. I'm trying to get my rook active Check. is what I'd like to do. Check. Check. All right. Check. Let's see if he gives him a draw. All right, we're not going to do a draw. Check. All right. Ah, okay, I almost had it. <laughs> yeah, I offered him a draw, but, you know, it's not, he's not obligated to take it or anything. I mean, etiquette's definitely different in uh, one minute. Okay, I'm not going to develop my knight through h6 this time. That's just silly. This is a Dutch reverse that we're playing. And I am going to castle first before doing anything rash. And probably play b6 and bishop b7. He gets a nice pawn mass in the center. I have to worry about knight takes c5. Yeah, he's actually going to sack the exchange and do some funky stuff. Multicast. He's out for blood. He says, no more draws for you, Finns. You are mortal, and... I am an immortal. Okay, I gotta watch myself. Knight a5 would have ran into queen a3. No rook b1. I wanna go knight a5. That's what I wanna do. I wanna exchange knights with him. He might not let me though. He's doing a good job of not letting me. Nevertheless, this position seems pretty okay. Mm, let's jump into this square. Uh, okay. No, can't go there. All right, I'm sacking an exchange, I guess. We'll see if he takes it or not. Wow. Okay, Check. let's sack some stuff. I'm hoping that my pawns Check. are good. I'm hoping that they provide... Oh, that's Time a queen. Warning. <laughs> okay, that's a queen, guys. Did I really just straight up hang my queen when I played knight takes d4? Yes, I did. Whoops. All right, I'm at 26-16 after that game. This has been a fun session, though. I'm glad that I decided to play at this moment, at this time of night, and that these guys are online. Tu Huang and Sauerkraut. Yeah, I mentioned before, but Sauerkraut is one guy I've had trouble with because for a GM, he's pretty fast. A lot of the Grandmasters I run into in the bullet... Pool. I say this as he's <laughs> about to get flagged on move number number 33, but a lot of the Grandmasters I run into in the bullet pool are not fast, but he's not one of them. I think he's pretty speedy when he wants to be. Tu Huang, uh, I'd say medium speed is where they lie. Let's go h3 and just kick the bishop away. I guess I'll take on d5 now. This is a pretty basic setup. I mean, White is not much better, if at all, in this position, but I played it before and I'm familiar with it against him, so. Mm, I guess I'll do this and then play for a4. Try to break up his pawns. Hmm, wants to do that. Okay, let's do let's do g4, first of all. And maybe this and, I don't know, try to get our bishop active. He has knight a5, though, that's kind of annoying. I wonder if I should have played pawn a5 myself. Um, now I can play b3. What am I doing against b3? I don't know. I gotta eliminate this bishop. I don't even want to take that pawn on c5 because I'm very worried about his bishop. I want to eliminate that. Uh, okay, let's take it now. Hopefully he takes it the f pawn. That would be nice. Of course, he's not going to do that. All right, runaway pawn, maybe. Get my bishop on the square. This is kind of nice. Um... Hmm. I'll try to threaten rook to c8. It's not going to work though, is it? I better go after one of their pawns while I still can. I have to be careful because taking that way would allow rook a8. Time warning. So they have to be cautious, cautious, cautious. 
Mm. Yeah, now I'm pretty much busted. I'm still gonna play for time though. Oh, now I'm doubly busted. Check. 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 Ah. Uh, you know, I might just pull this Check. off on time. Check. Check. I might just Check. do it. Ooh, I got them at the end. They couldn't free move <laughs> to capture my their my my last pawn, the only mating material I have remaining. All right, close close shave with two Huang in that one at twenty six twenty five. Um, I have no defined starting or stopping point for my sessions in Bullet, so as long as the action's still good, I'm gonna play a little bit more. Eliana, familiar opponents. Okay. Usually Eliana does more standard stuff, but I guess today they're experimenting. This is a completely fine setup for me. Um, that hangs a pawn though, I probably should not have done that. I think this is okay though. I forfeited the bishop pair, but other than that, the position is fine. They can take on c3, then take on d5, but I have bishop takes h7 to regain the pawn. But undoubtedly with the bishop pair, like black is extremely comfortable in this position. The a4 just stop b5. Mm, that was nearly a blunder. Yeah, they can take there, can't they? And then take on d5. All right. So I'm going to be in an endgame upon down. Hmm. I get this pawn back. It's nice. Okay, this endgame is fine for me now. Bishop c4 check is a threat. Threatening b6. They'll try to go a5 and break up their pawns. Let's put the bishop back here. Their bishop is pretty strong on uh, the e4 square. So my bishop is now cut out of the game. What is going to happen? All right, you know what? I'm sacking the exchange. I think this is a good time to do it. At least I want to win this pawn. And at least I can maybe use my A pawn advantageously. Time warning, huh? Um, okay, let's go here and then try to put the bishop on b3. Check. Oh, this is not good though. Um, I gotta go here to defend. Check. Uh, okay, let's just run with our king. Check. Yeah, I'm losing Check. in this position, but Check. I don't know if they're capable of winning this amount of time Check. left. Check. Yeah, they're not. All right, another lucky flag. It's the name of the game in bullet. I'm at 2633. It's multicast on the list again. I keep checking. Yep, there he is. All right, 28-22, far ahead of Vanticulti. <laughs> At the beginning of the session, I was talking about how how uh, high Vanticulti was, but Multicast has leapfrogged ahead. Yeah, they're playing right now again. Did I get two draws or one draw against Multicast so far? Not that it matters, really, but yeah, I had two draws, okay. Two draws, two losses. It's better than I've done previously. They really like this bird's opening. F4. And here again, F4, E5, G3. That might have been a pre-move, but um, again, completely off-the-wall openings. Stuff that you wouldn't see remotely at a high level. Uh, okay, let's go Scandi against JJOKK. This is my wheelhouse. The good old Scandi. They're playing a testing line with uh, F3 and this knight maneuver. I'm gonna try not to play E6. That's what I'm gonna try to avoid. I would like to get them to exchange uh, that knight, exactly that knight that was on F4. So this is something I like, in fact. All right. 
They're trying to crowd my bishop is the thing. I don't know if that move was justified, though. Now they should castle one way or the other. Um, okay, let's push past. This is, this is really difficult for me, though, now. They can just take on f4, and my position is sketch-tastic. Yeah, I don't know about this. I'm probably looking at having to play f6 soon. Or swindle them on the clock. That move, does that work? Check. I guess we'll find out. Check. Now, king f8, otherwise bishop g5 was looking Check. awesome for him. All right, I'm going to try to trade queens next. I got to go queen d5 or queen e8, one of the two. Or maybe queen e7. Queen e7 might be good. Can this save the day for us? You know, it might. I think they got overexcited with the sacrifice on f7 on move 21. They could have postponed that move. Now they're going to lose on time. I'm defending this. Yeah, they're going to lose on time. Even if I have to give up my morning. queen, doesn't matter. Okay, back in the pool, 26-35. Yeah, I think they pulled the trigger on rook takes f7, or sorry, bishop takes f7 too fast. Um, this is a moment that in a blitz game, I would be dead to rights as black because white would have sufficient time to calculate it. But since this is a bullet game, I think even if this might somehow work out, I, th I still think it's incorrect to spend that amount of time to look for it. I mean, he must have spent, I don't know, at least 10 seconds approaching that. Um, just play rook ef1, double up, and attack. It's just a very natural attack that will unfold. He's allowed to put something on f6, and then he can throw the g-pawn at me, and, you know, what counterplay do I have here as black? I only get to do something active when I'm forced to defend. Like, he sacrifices a full rook, and now I know what I have to do. I have to defend. Whereas previously, I know I have to defend, but he hasn't invested any material. If he just goes rook e f1, much easier for him to play. He doesn't have to justify being down a rook. So, all right. Sauerkraut, Eliana. Mate threat on g7. Hmm. This is a sharp position. Sauerkraut, you need to get up to like 2,500 at least. <laughs> then I won't feel bad about losing to you because my rating will still be somewhat intact when it happens. Rook h4 is really nifty. That's a cool move. Because it's untouchable because of the mate threat on g7. Yeah, black is, I think, busted in that position. All right, to Huang, we're getting our usual. Our usual. No, we're not. They're playing it different this time around. This is a line they have played against me before. I don't know the name of this line, or even if it has a name. It's not a very good line for black. Um, I guess I'll just take here and then push e4. It's not a very good line for black, but it's it's interesting at least. It's something unusual. Hmm. Let's send the knight over to the king side. And maybe I can use the c4 square. I want to place a knight on d6, bug house, checkmate. I can take that c5 pawn. Do you guys ever think about that, like when you're in a game and you're like, I really wish I would have X piece, because if I had this piece, I'd be able to do a checkmate if I could just place it anywhere I want. I think about that sometimes. Okay, the knight's coming to b4. Sure. I need to get castled. I'll let them take on a2. That's fine. I just need to castle. I think they're going to throw the g-pawn at me. Yeah. Okay, let's simplify. I see a way that this can be done. Just to trade some stuff. And that hopefully reduces their attacking potential, too. Okay, now we're rolling. Because now Check. I get all of these discovered attacks. Check. This is a, a smothered mate, Check. isn't it? Check. That's nice. Checkmate. It's always nice to get that checkmate. So that's a real common tactical pattern that, if you guys are seeing it for the first time, I suspect many of you viewers are not, but this is a classic smothered mate using a knight and a queen. Um, you check, and then the key is really the second move, the double check. Knight h6, double check against the king. And then, anytime there's a double check, the king has to move, because you can't simultaneously get rid of both checking pieces. So the king has to move, and then queen g8, compelling the rook to capture. Note the, the king cannot capture because it's covered by the knight. And then knight f7 mate. 
some other checkmate. The king has no squares. So that was nice of him to allow me to do that. And back in the pool, multicast. Nice to see you again. All right, we're going Scandinavian. How often will I have a chance to play the Scandinavian defense against perhaps the world champion? It's my pet opening, and he's also from Scandinavia, so it's it's just perfect. Um, okay, let's go knight f6. Just everyone wins when I play the Scandinavian against multicast, right? Just nobody left out. Okay, let's go knight e5. Uh, I guess I'll play a6 and just try to arrange some defense on the queen side. Maybe I'm scaring him with my demonstration with my pawns over here. Uh, probably not, but I'll act like I'm scaring him. He can take on e4, I think. He says, yes, I can. Hmm. Queen d3. I guess I'll go queen d3, try to trade. Taking and then jumping the knight into f5 is very good, though. That's going to cost me material if he does that, isn't, isn't it? I think so. I guess I'll try to counterattack for now, but yeah, this is this is costing Check. me. Um, knight g4, does that do anything? I don't think so. Yeah, this is no fun. No fun at all. Okay. Ooh. Check. Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. Knight e6 is trivial. Just gonna wait to see if he does that. No, he Time didn't. warning. Oh, this is still resignable. Okay. Ah, hmm. Well, I thought I had an okay position. King h1 was interesting. I wonder why he played that move. That encouraged me to throw my kingside pawns forward. All right, I'm getting back in the pool, though. Eliana. E4 this time? Nope. Knight f3. This is a speculative gambit. Highly speculative gambit. Uh, I'll just go e6. Sure. We'll play for the Check. ending. Even though uh, White has the bishop pair in this position, so I'm sure they're not any worse, if at all. Let's go h5 and just stake out space on the king side. Because the king side is likely to be an area of operation for both sides. So why not try to muster up some territory around there? Um, yeah, my knight was running out of squares in that position. I'm going to try to go knight bd7 next move. Induce some trades. And bishop back to c5. Might as well. Uh, let's go... Let's go here. Maybe I can go g5 is what I was thinking with that move. And then g4. Threatening to take on f3 and infiltrate with my rook. Yeah, I bet they take with the bishop, I was going to say. Really? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I see what you're up to. If I took, they had 95, so that's what they were planning on. Can I get in and actually win this pawn? That's pretty funny. I don't think they have time to do this, do they? Uh, maybe. Hmm. This is kind of funny. Um, let's run. Time warning. We will run. I want to take on g3. That's my sole reason for being right now. Uh, Alright, let's do this. So if rook a h1, I have bishop f4, right? And then rook g1 to come? They saw it. Okay, let's just trade some pawns. Check. This is a tricky position. Check. You are really going to take that pawn. You are a madman. Check. Eliana. You are an absolute madman. Someone should lock you up and throw away the key. Check. Because that was just risky. Alright, let's not trade the bishops. Well, we both have very little time left. Alright. All right, um, let's get back in the pool. I'm at 26.44. By the way, I, I haven't intended to make these videos so long. Um, I don't know what I'm at on this recording time for this one. It's been a while, though. But, uh, yeah, it's just I've been playing well, and there's been a lot of action, especially this session. So that's why recent videos have been so long. So hope you guys do not mind. Um, I don't know why you would mind, but <laughs> I know some people prefer shorter videos that they can just more easily digest. But hey, you can always watch it in parts if you need to.
All right, let's just, I know I'm like following multicast like a crazy stalker, but yeah, he's playing three minute. This could be a while. All right, I'm going to play a couple more games. I think I'll play like two more and then call it a day. Let's observe a game right now as long as we're watching. I wonder who would win in a match between Tu Huang and Sauerkraut and Bullet. That's interesting. I think they're pretty close. I mean, you can see their ratings are very close. 10 points away from each other right now. I sort of think Tu Huang has a slight edge just because they're trickier. But Sauerkraut, like I've said, is, is very solid and fast. Both of them are fast for GMs. Rook B3, that's a... Uh, I don't know what that move was. <laughs> Desperation move. All right, so two Huang and then one more opponent after this, and we're going to call it a day. They're going to go back to their usual knight c6. I don't think they will because the bishop can't get out to g4, so that's probably why Tu Huang didn't want to do that. Maybe they'll take on c4. I guess not. So we have a, a variation of the Richter Rouser. This is really standard stuff. I don't know much about this line. Um... I wish I did. I wish I knew more, but I don't. Let's go a3 and just try to get them to take here. They've weakened their dark square slightly, so that's nice that I have this dark square bishop. I mean, it's always nice to maintain that. I didn't see that move. Uh, let's go a4. Oh, they can take on h3. I'm missing stuff this game. Just missing stuff, guys. Go here and attack the d5 pawn. Remarkably, my position is not that bad still. Oh, let's take and then take d5. I can do that. That is okay to do. Oh, they hung their queen. Nice. Nice for us. They resigned. I'm at 26.52. All right, last game of the day. Hmm. Yeah, this, this variation is quite complicated. I've been meaning to study this in uh, the... Did I say Richter Rouser? I meant Rogozin. I think I said Richter Rouser, which is a line in the classical Sicilian with Bishop G5. I totally did not mean to call this the Richter Rouser if I did. So this is the Rogozin variation. For some reason, I always have trouble remembering that. But the Rogozin is when black adopts like a QGD formation, but develops the bishop to B4 rather than E7. So... Sauerkraut and Slugger. Mm, queen f3, tricky move. Because they're threatening bishop h3 check, which might compel Sauerkraut to play rook e3, but then the idea is queen h1 and pick up the rook on a1. Now black should be winning. Yeah, and white's down time. This is black's game to lose now. I don't think they will lose. I think they'll get the job done. Yep, they just won white's queen. So I might have an angry sauerkraut on my hands if they're my next opponent. Nope, it's too Huang. All right. Let's see if they play this uh, B4 system, like rook B1, we're trying to go B4. Yep, they are. They seem content to sack this pawn against me. They didn't do it that time. See if they go g4. No g4. Hmm. Well, this position I like. I'm okay with this one. I'll try to stick this knight on d4. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Bishop d6. And try to discourage them from playing f5. Now I'm going to do this. And bust open the center. Maybe bishop h4. Maybe that. That looks uncomfortable. They can play queen f3 to get out of it, but maybe I start honing in on their pieces. Let's double up. Just so no rook d1 can be played. I would like to activate my light square bishop, but it's not easy. It's not easy being cheesy. Uh, okay, let's go knight f8. Still expecting him to take. Now bishop d5 is enabled. Let's go here. Maybe maybe f1. I can sneak in. I'm also attacking. 
Uh, ooh, I want to go bishop d5 really bad. I'm going to do it. Sadly, I can't take on f1 after they take my bishop with check, because I'm in check, but check. he hung that. I had a feeling he would hang that. Okay, so I ended the session at 26.58. Uh, let's tabulate the results. Uh, wow, <laughs> I played over 20 games this session. I can't even tabulate all the results. Right, I started... Oh, yeah. Well, this is going to be a long video. <laughs> Anyways, I'll, I'll look back and see the results, but I played over 20 games, so it was a positive session. And I went up in rating a little bit. Um, I'm at number four. So I actually lost a, a, a rank, a ranking spot on the list, but that's because multicast became active. Uh, but I went up in rating, pretty healthy rating. Oh my gosh, multicast is playing still. Okay, I'm, I'm getting back in the pool. Is this a draw? Are they lagging? What's going on? Multicast is minus time. Weird. Okay, they might have some connection problems. Strange. But anyways, yeah, this this uh, video has been going quite long. So um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I'll be back tomorrow with another bullet video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.